Hello everyone and welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play the greatest strategy games. Today we are continuing on with our basic tutorial for Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is episode number eight. And in this episode, we are again going to jump back into task forces. So I lied to you. At the end of episode seven, I said next time we'll get into air wings and go look at the air war a little bit. Uh, in retrospect, I look back, there were a few things that we have not covered that I think we should cover to be complete. One is I feel like I kind of rushed through the repair section at the end of episode number seven. Maybe it wasn't quite clear enough. So we're going to look here at Pearl Harbor where we have a lot of things to repair and kind of go back into uh, ship repair uh, because it's very important and Regardless of how much of a beginner or an advanced player you are, you're going to start off uh, having to deal with that, obviously, because there's quite a bit of repair to be done here at Pearl Harbor. Um, the second thing we're going to deal with, which is an incredibly important topic and really the reason I wanted to go back into task forces this time, uh, hopefully for a little smaller uh, sized episode, hopefully this doesn't last as long as the other two have, uh, and we, we're just tying up loose ends, but this topic is transports. So troop transports is something that we haven't covered yet. Now, I debated whether to do that when we did ground forces, and it, we probably will talk about it again when we do ground forces. Obviously, ground forces in this uh, game are a little bit different than if you're playing any kind of war in Europe to uh, type of game, you know, war in the east, war in the west, um, you know, North Africa, because the land forces here have generally got to be moved across water. So, you know, troop transports become incredibly important. Later in the game, I can tell you, if you play into 1943 and 1944, it's just amazing. I mean, you, you wouldn't believe the troop transports the Allies have. They've got, you know, big guns on them they've got some transports that are taking you know marines but then other transports that you know are blowing the uh the beach wide open so uh it's a cool part of the game we won't go that deep into it uh, that stuff's not even available yet but i will show you how to do some basic troop transporting around because you have to do that right from the start as the allied player you want to try to get troops out into what I've been calling our picket fence or our iron crescent, if you want to make it sound really tough. But it's basically, you know, this Pearl Harbor to Palmyra to Christmas to, uh, sorry, not Canton, but Pago, Suva, Nadi, Nomaya to Australia. So this crescent also includes Moresby, Port Moresby, and Darwin. So, that you know, this is where we're going to be building our defensive line. You have got to get troops out here as fast as you can. You also want to do that uh, in some respects because the Japanese subs will start to come down here. Um, you know, a good Japanese player knows, you know, it's pretty obvious if you look at the grand strat strategic map where the strategic areas are, especially, you know, Pago, Suva here. You're going to be seeing Japanese subs here pretty quickly so the faster we can get troops out here and get them on the islands um the better shape we're in to you know blunt maybe a quick japanese uh dive at one of these islands or you know the kitty butai which is the big japanese uh, task force that attacked pearl harbor that can go anywhere you know, uh, I've seen Japanese players take that immediately to Singapore and the Dutch East Indies. I have also seen them, you know, come straight south here, which can cause you quite a few problems, you know, getting stuff there. But we'll have recon on all that once we set up our forces and uh, make sure we know where they are. Uh, but assuming they do kind of head back to Japan and fuel up and get rearmed, we want to get these troop transports down there to uh, our islands as fast as we can uh, so they don't get caught up in that job that Japanese juggernaut so uh, I think the final thing we'll talk about uh, in the naval section so we're going to do repair we're going to do some troop transport um, I think maybe the final thing will be a little bit of uh, 
force composition, so task force composition. I know that that uh, I get a lot of questions about that. If I ever talk to somebody about this game, is you know, what ships do you put together? Uh, I, we've looked at this carrier task force that's out here um, just west of Pearl Harbor, and so we looked at that the makeup of this task force. You know, so carrier, three cruisers, five destroyers. Uh, certainly nothing wrong with that early in the game for a carrier task force. I usually like a few more destroyers. We are going to be getting a ton of destroyers within, I think, 15 to 20 days that have radar. Uh, they have surface radar and air radar. Uh, that will be very helpful. And we will be replacing these older, at least I do. I replace these older destroyers. I, and then I start having them just go with task forces, uh, cargo, tanker, troop transports, anything that I think is a little bit important. I will generally send one of these older destroyers with just to give it a little anti-sub protection. We also have other, uh, we have other ships like uh, anti-mine laying that give you a nice little uh, anti-sub number. And sometimes I'll be sending those with cargo, tankers. You just want to have one ship in important convoys that can detect submarines. Because the last thing in the world you want, especially, let's take a troop transport, which we're going to be talking about soon, is to lose a whole infantry uh, regiment to a torpedo. Uh, you know, makes your heart sink when you see it. And it's just little digitized men. So... Let's go here into Pearl Harbor. We haven't talked a lot about Pearl Harbor, really, given its importance. Uh, we look here at the base. You can see the airfield service damage, 18. The runway damage is 5. So not terrible. You know, we've got a lot of engineers here. We've got 177. We've got 21 vehicles here. They will get that shaped up really quickly. We've got a ton of fuel here. Uh, we are requesting quite a bit, 14,000, <clears> but we've got over 600,000. Now we're going to be sending those short range convoys uh, with our cargo ships that have lesser endurance. We're going to be sending them out to these small islands here to the south, also to Johnston. So like Johnston, Christmas, Palmyra, uh, I, you always supply those. We maybe go north to Midway. That's a decision you make early in the game that you... So... Let's just go up here. Here's Midway. Now, the Japanese player many times will bring his main task force here, strafe Midway. Uh, you know, you don't have a ton here. You've got some patrol planes. You have a Marine uh, battalion and a base. I mean, you just don't have a whole lot here. Uh, so one thing I do while we're just talking about how to play the game a little bit is get some subs up here. We've got two already, but you know, if you could pick off, you know, one of those nice uh, ships from that Japanese task force, that's always great. But anyway, the point being is you can supply Midway, Johnston, uh, and at least Christmas, Palmyra, and Fanning uh, from Pearl Harbor. I usually also have things going down to Tahiti, although I might do that for through the canal, the Panama Canal, and some stuff to uh, Pago and Suva, depending on you know how your picket fence is looking. If you can get it around this corner down here to the south and take it there with very little uh, submarine interference, that's nice. That's nice if you can do it, uh, especially if you're getting a lot of Japanese subs or the Kitty Butai, or other Japanese ships that are harassing you off the Australian coast, uh, and you're having a hard time getting supply out of Sydney or Brisbane to those islands, you can just run around the corner here and do it from Pearl Harbor. Okay, well, so now we're talking about Pearl Harbor. That wasn't really supposed to be our topic today. Pearl with a port seven, we'll take that to an eight, of course. It's got the biggest airfield you can have in the game. Uh, as you see here, we've got 122 ships in port and 184 aircraft. That's fantastic. That's fun. Oh, so I will say, first turn, first few turns for the Allies. Do not send any... You may send some recon or patrol up 
especially north up here. And I put all my fighters up in a defensive cap here. I do not go after that main main Japanese force. And we'll talk about what I just said there <laughs> with the fighters. We haven't gotten to the air stuff yet. I realize that. Um, but I don't do a whole lot. I definitely don't send any ships out of Pearl Harbor until I know that that main Japanese task force is way clear of Pearl. You know, of course you have subs out. Uh, we want subs out. We want these guys kind of chasing after them and trying to pick off uh, some vulnerable ships, maybe. Uh, but any kind of surface ship, like what do we have here? I, I forget. Ah, we've got, oh, wow. So we've got a cruiser here. We have some uh, destroyer mine, uh, minesweeper destroyers. So these are just modified destroyers that have been turned into minesweepers. They have an anti-sub of two. Uh, again, we'll be taking this and definitely not going there. We'll be going, you know, down and around. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to generally say that about Pearl Harbor. Don't send any ships out. Send subs. Have them chase after the task force if you want and pick off some things. But uh, you got to let that get clear because this Japanese force is incredibly powerful um, and experienced their pilots are much better than yours their equipment is much better than your just don't mess with them now you might put you know we are going to put fighters up uh but that's just to keep them from hitting your runways again or getting into the ships at port we'll put enough fighters up that they can't just run you know unmolested bombing runs into your port again and uh, generally, a, an experienced Japanese player won't even try that again. It's just not worth it for them. They got their free shot. They took out a lot of stuff. So anyway, let's get into repair. We've kind of looked over Pearl Harbor here. We looked at its card. Um, here are the ships at anchor. A uh, quick way to see you know, what kind of ships you have before we go to the ships at anchor button over here. Uh, you know, you've got eight battleships, you've got nine cruisers, you've got 30 destroyers, you've got seven, and we learned last time that AP seems to stand in for both cargo and transport, I guess, even though AP generally stands for transport. You've got two AOs. These are oilers. We're going to use those as tankers early in the game. You've got four additional subs, uh, and that, you know, that's in addition to the ones you have out here on the float just to the east of Pearl. Uh, you have 27 of these destroyer uh, minesweepers, or those may just be minesweepers. We'll, we'll look at those. Uh, you got some PT boats. Uh, PT boats, you know, look, we'll run them around in our harbor. They, they kind of don't do anything. They give you early detection. Uh, I've actually had one, you know, I don't even know how it happened. I guess the sub surfaced and they, they took on a sub at one point. But these PT boats, you know, in World War II, I guess they were kind of important. You think about a big naval base, a big port. You've got your PT boats running around there, making sure, you know, uh, drunk sailors aren't running into battleships with their <laughs> with craft. But, you know, whatever. You've got PT boats in this game. We hadn't really talked about it. You've got 15 auxiliary boats. Uh, and that, oh, that is something else we'll go into here Um in this episode is these auxiliary boats because you have quite a few of them later in the game you'll really have a lot of them um and what they are they're basically floating um home depots uh they, they've got a little bit of everything you can get uh there's repair auxiliary ships there's ammunition auxiliary ships there's all different kinds. You know, these AOs we talked about, these are just floating gas tanks. Um, or uh, gas tanks. Well, they, they help fill up your gas tank. They are floating gas stations. Um, but the auxiliary ships, you know, you have tenders for everything that might need to be supplied. So they're really just supply ships. And as the game moves on and you get later on as an allied player, they will be chasing after your big task forces to resupply them. Early in the game, we hide these suckers. We just, I mean, there's no reason, you don't really need them um, because your bases are still adequate to meet all of your supply and fuel needs. But as we are moving across the Pacific, invading islands, 
or, you know, if we get in a situation where we are in a massive face off with the Japanese uh, carrier forces, so it's carrier force on carrier force, we may need them then. That should not be happening to you as the allied player early in the game. Shouldn't really happen till mid 42 at the earliest, but we will talk about those. So, anyway, these are, these are all the boats you have at Pearl Harbor. Let's go into the anchor. Um, so we'll sort these first of all, you know, just by ship class. So it told us we have eight battleships and indeed we do. Um, and as you can see over here, you can see red, orange, kind of a lighter color. This is very nicely color coded to show you the damage and how severe it is. I don't think that you have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that a uh, deep red 99 is probably not good. <laughs> it's it's going down. The Oklahoma and the Arizona will sink uh, after we hit next turn. They they're just you know they're ready to go. So we've got system damage, which really goes into all the systems on the ship that make the ship operate. You've got float damage, which is kind of what it says it is you know i mean these things are pretty intuitive system damage float damage that's how much flooding you have on how likely it is you are going to sink now of course if you had 99 percent system damage and zero float damage you would probably just be dead in the water whereas if you had zero system damage but 99 float damage you would just sink it makes sense right um then you can also have engine damage uh, like I said, this game is incredible. Just the way it models everything. You've got engine damage. Now, 99 in, in, engine damage, you you can see here, you dynamically update the speed. So with 99 in, engine damage, obviously you can't move. And so their speed is zero. Now you can see here with 15 engine damage, the Nevada could only move at a speed six. The West Virginia has 45. It can only, you know, this sucker's just, it's barely moving. Okay, so that's, you know, how damage works. Basically, anything over, let's say, a 15 or a 20, you're definitely going to want to get fixed. Now, how do you get that fixed? For, well, for one thing, there are shipyards. So here at Pearl Harbor, let's go down here. This shipyard is a very big one. It's a 100 shipyard. Um that is 100,000 tons. So we talked about tons last time and docking capacity. So you kind of maybe have a decent idea of how big that is. So this port at Pearl Harbor, size seven port, can take up to 104 tons, 100, 104, 104,000 tons, 60,000 with any one ship. Um, and when we go back here, uh, you can see here, repair shipyard, capacity 100,000 tons. So close, very similar, right? Um, this also has a maximum ship capacity that you could look up based on this 100. Now the bigger shipyards in the game are going to be Pearl Harbor. Uh, San Francisco, I believe has maybe a 90. Let's look. Nope, it's 140, nice, okay. So San Francisco has a 140, LA has a 90. That's what I was thinking of, the 90. Uh, so they have a lot of capacity. Early here in the game at Pearl Harbor, once the Japanese task force gets out, some of your ships that are still seaworthy, you may want to uh, send back to the States. And especially uh, back to the Eastern US, if possible, or if it's going to be a big, long repair, you may want to go back here because the eastern U.S. has 300. So you're talking about 300,000 tons. That's a lot of tons. Um, you can get a pretty decent sized navy in, you know, in those shipyards. So let's go back to this screen and let's go to um, shipyard usage. So I just clicked on the shipyard, shipyard usage. This is a very valuable screen. It will show you the repair allocation, which we're gonna go into in a minute. It'll show you all the damage. Um, so automatically when something is damaged above a, 
into this orange level, it starts getting repaired by its own crew. So that's what this readiness is. And let's just go into that. So if we go back to our anchor, let's uh, sort it based on float damage. Float damage, you know, is going to show you the things that are about to sink. All of these, you know, uh, battleships are about to sink. They're about to go down. Uh, the Helena is, that's a good example. It's got 12 and 21. So you see here, system damage is 12, flood damage is 21, and then you see this major damage, 16 major, 3 major. Um, so, you know, engine damage, you have 8, but 3 of it's major. Okay, we're going to talk about that in one second. So you, you kind of get the idea. We're 1 to 100 scale, so we do have some flooding damage. Uh, you can even see the uh, smoke out of the ship. Now, because this mod I'm running, I think it's showing these double ships like this. I w am going to uh, look into that because it's kind of annoying me. Hopefully, it's not annoying you. Uh, system damage, 12. Flood damage, 21. Some of it's major. We'll figure out what that means in a minute. So we're going to come down here, and it's telling us the current repair estimate is 23 days. Okay, 23 hash. You see that hash. The repair type is readiness, and the priority is normal. Uh, repair. So there are four different kinds of repair. You have to make an initial decision between one or the other which is, oh, I say one or the other, one of the four and two of the four, you've got to make that decision to open up the other two. So here, repair type is either readiness or stood down. That's your initial decision, readiness or stood down. Um, it makes just logical sense if you think about it. Readiness is, this is your, that or that ship's crew trying to get this ship back ready it could be put into a task force if it's in readiness um, so if you wanted to hightail it out of somewhere you may just uh, pick on this readiness to give it the minimal amount of repairs to make it seaworthy to make it uh, have a little you know a few guns that are working to get its systems back online whatever that may be uh, that is readiness repair now, what does 23 dash mean? 23 means it would take that much to repair down to these levels, 16 and three, and the dash means uh, with readiness repair, it, it cannot repair major damage. So if you think of major damage like flood damage, you know, so we're doing readiness, the crew is doing whatever it can, um, but it's taking on some water, these guys can't get below the waterline, and they're not expert welders, let's say, or they just don't have the equipment to, to repair this major damage. That major damage is going to have to be repaired in a shipyard. Um, and so we've made our initial decision here, repair type readiness. Let's say, no, you know what? Um, and that means essentially it's sitting there at the pier floating. It could leave at a moment's notice. Now, the other decision is you could say, nope, I'm going to stand that down. So you stand your, you stand the ship down. That could mean a variety of things. It's a little bit of an abstraction, I think, because, you know, standing down kind of means you're, you're bringing it up out of the water. You could be putting it in dry dock. You could be doing a lot of different things with it, right? But essentially for this game, it just means it's not ready. It's going to take two to three days to get it up and out and two to three days to get it back and in, uh, back into readiness mode. So just think of it that way is if you're going to stand something down, you have to be willing to take a couple of days to take it out and a couple of days to put it back in at least. Um, so that's stood down. Now the advantage of that is, of course, it's faster. So stood down pier side, and, and the reason it would be faster is, you know, you're not still maintaining the ship kind of thinking, hey, we may leave port, we may not, whatever. Everybody, it's all hands on deck. We're stood down. All hands on deck maybe wasn't the best phrasing. Y you know what I mean. Everybody's working on it pier side at the pier side. Uh, and that's going to take 10 days. Again, it will not repair major damage because we have the hashtag. Uh, so that stood down pier side. 
So these, you know, let's talk about this again. Readiness or stood down. Now, once you pick stood down, you have three different options. Pier side, repair ship, and shipyard. So let's go back to uh, pier side. We just talked about repair ship 16. This is if you have repair ships in the port. Um, and sometimes they are very good at repairing things. And you'll see this number actually be quite a bit better uh, than, than as opposed to worse. Um, so you have these repair ship tenders. We won't go too deep into that. I don't want to get into the weeds of how exactly it works um, for, you know, repair ship, pier side, and us trying to figure that out for 30 minutes. Uh, the basic idea is there are auxiliary ships called repair ships. They can help out uh, with the repair. In this case, if we go and look at what's at anchor again, let's just pull this up. I know that I had, had seen one repair ship that was damaged, an AR. So we're looking for AR, which is basically oftentimes auxiliary. Um, yeah, so the Vestal here. Uh, but then you also have the Medusa. Now, question whether if the Vestal was not uh, damaged, you know, maybe that repair is faster. Uh, who knows? Um, so let's go back up here and look at these again. Got to do the right sort, float. Um, and then we've been looking at the Helena. I thought, oh, you know, <laughs> so go back down here. So you're just seeing once a ship goes into repair and you've picked any of uh, those options, then it's under this tab. So show ships under repair. We move the Helena is down here. Um, so let's pick that up again. So we've chosen stood down. So we've gone through three of the four. Let's then click this to shipyard. And here we go. So now you're seeing 15 days, there's no hashtag. That means it will be repairing all of the damage, including the major damage. So once you move it back to the shipyard, you can get everything repaired. So that's really the distinction there. When you look at, the, at every repair type, if it has a hash under the days, you know, if we go back to readiness, if it's got a hash, it cannot repair major damage in that uh, method of repair. So pier side could not, repair ship could not. We have to go to shipyard, move it all the way back to the shipyard. That takes 15 days. So you may say, well, why don't we always just repair everything at the shipyard? Well, there's all kinds of different reasons why maybe you wouldn't, uh, you know, want to take the time or spend the points to repair it all. Um, you know, if we look back here, uh, ships under repair. So we're still under ships, you know, under repair. You look here, here's our repair shipyard. Capacity is 100,000. We just added another 10,000 to that with the Helena. The Helena, exactly 10,000 actually. Tonnage, 10,000. Okay. Here at the start at Pearl Harbor, what you're going to find is, is, well, let's look at the tonnage of the Oklahoma. Let's just say we wanted to try to save the Oklahoma. We couldn't even if we wanted to, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but tonnage 27,500 right so as you can see you're going to be chewing through that tonnage at your repair yard fairly quickly once you start putting these really big ships in there so if you're going to be repairing multiple battleships or a carrier uh, let's go see how much a carrier weighs I just can't remember off the top of my head so the enterprise okay 19 you know almost 20,000 uh, battleships are very, very heavy, it seems. Cruisers, 9,000. So if that just kind of gives you an idea, right, um, what we're talking about. But, you know, with everything injured here, everything with float, we may very well be over that 100,000. So what happens? Well, they kind of get in a queue, right? First of all, it slows everything down. The less that you can have used here the better so some of your uh if we had a cruddy little ship you know cruiser mine layer isn't the most important ship in the world it's 
and you can tell that. Go look at a shift's victory value to see how really important it is. Here we've got a six victory value. We're going to be getting a ton of these shifts. Uh, ton's not the right word to use since we're going to be talking about tonnage. But you see all of the major damage here. We would have to put this into the shipyard. Now it is only about you know around 4,000 tons. Um, but there might you may look at this and say, hey, let's just take this to readiness. When it gets when it's ready, when it's okay, and we think we can sail it out of here, let's take it back to the eastern US, let's take it back to San Francisco, someplace where there's not capacity problems. Because every um bit of tonnage you put in here slows everything down. Okay. So if before, you know, they've got the Nevada on pure side here. Uh, let's move the Nevada, uh, well, first of all, just so I can illustrate the point. So we've got the Helena, it's 15 days in the shipyard. Hey, not bad. 44, 48, 48 for these destroyers. So that was already done for us. Let's go move the Nevada, which has got a lot of tonnage, obviously. Uh, let's go move it to the shipyard. Okay, that's going to take 117 days. Major repair, but for a battleship, that's worth it. I would definitely do that here at the start of the game. Now you see here, days. These were 40s, remember? Now it's 52, 56, 56. Uh, the Helena stayed the same, uh, so that's good. But it'll start pushing back the time on these things. The more and more tonnage you add, you see now we're up to 41,000 in tonnage. Um, and that's how repair works. So that's a general overview. As with everything else in this game, you can go down that path and learn a ton about how ships were repaired in World War II, a ton of how, how they're repaired in this game uh, by points. The more naval support you have at a base, for instance, so Pearl Harbor um, has 586 naval support. I can tell you we're not going to go deeply into naval support. We'll talk about it when we're at the ground units. But I can tell you 586 is a lot, quite a bit of naval support. I mean, you've got, you know, the Pacific Fleet Command headquarters here that adds, you know, 86 naval support. So all of these things along the line uh, add up to 586 in naval support. That's a lot of naval support. So here's the big one the base force at Pearl Harbor, the Pearl Harbor Base Force Engineer Unit. Look at this, 500 naval support. That's, you know, massive. That may be the biggest uh, engineering unit in the game, uh, as far as I know. So uh, the more naval support you have, the more repair ships you have, gives you more options. Um, just some things to think about when you think about repair. So let's move on to transport ships. Again, I could talk about all of these topics for days, literally, but um, let's go over here to San Francisco and let's load up some troops. Okay, uh, let's talk about transport. So let's click on this. Now, if you ever <laughs> can't remember, they put it in red here for you, but you know, that can cause some panic when you're like, where did all my ships go? So now we've clicked it back to active ships. You'll see it up here, active ships. You see here in San Francisco, we have got destroyers. We've got subs that we'll be, you know, we would give orders to. We're not going to do it, obviously, in this episode. Although I will be doing it after this uh, tutorial is over for people that want to stick around and watch more episodes. I'm going to be doing the entire Allied setup and then playing the game. So... I may be doing that over the next four or five years, uh, and you can tune in for that. That'll be fun. Um, so we've got subs. We've got oilers that we're going to turn in. You know, we're going to use them as tankers. We're not going to turn them into anything. Um, AE, auxiliary ships. So this is what we were talking about, auxiliary ammunition replenishment. So you will see, so let's bring up Form New Task Force. Here in San Francisco, we've got a ton, you know, we've got all the options, I think. Um, in this case, you'll see, here's replenishment. We could choose that, that replenishment. Generally, that kind of refers to oil or oilers, uh, something that's going to give it a liquid. Um, and so support, 
is often how I would put it. I, I, I'll have to look. I don't think that there's a distinction or difference there. Uh, it kind of just helps you as far as I'm aware. Um, but let's put the lesson in there just for fun. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, auxiliary first. So we've got the lesson in there. What can the lesson do? Uh, essentially, it's got 5,468. This is supply. You are going to dock this and do dock supply or uh, load supply, but this is going to be a tender ship. Um, so it's going to have ammunition. You know, you see this auxiliary ammunition, and uh, it shows 3721 supply. If we went back here, um and deleted so let's get rid of this let's uh we haven't done this yet let's disband ta task force let's go down here this one may already be full um and so i don't know if i'm giving you a good example but i kind of wanted you to see this if it's pot where did my ae ship go okay so that's auxiliary ammunition it has something loaded on it already, which I suspect is ammunition, uh, auxiliary oil. You can go down here, see refuel arm ships on this list or load tenders on the list. You can do a lot of functions here for every ship that's at anchor in a port. So we're going to say load tenders on this list, and we're going to see if the lesson changes. It says nine ships on this list were loaded at port. And sure enough, the Lassen jumped up here to 5,400. That's an ammunition ship. Um, so we would take this out with a task force behind it. And as the task force ran out of ammunition, quote unquote, we would have the Lassen there to re amutize it. Is that a word? Re amutize? Um, but that's the idea behind tenders. Is they carry certain specific things um, to replenish, quote unquote, replenish you. Now, what's this? Auxiliary miscellaneous. It could be anything. It stands in for anything. Now, that's been loaded up because we hit load tenders on this list. Um, and that's what tenders are. So, you know, if you're ever wondering, like, what is, what are these things? AG, AG. Usually they're auxiliary. So we have. Uh, as I said, this is the ammunition, this is auxiliary oil, this is auxiliary miscellaneous. You just load them up here, and you're going to take them with your task forces uh, to resupply them and make sure they're always in supply and have what they need. Now, early in the game, I think I mentioned this before, early in the game, there's not a whole lot for these to do. You can run them like cargo ships if you want to, and that's fine. You know, run it like a cargo ship. I told you already we're going to run the AOs like tankers. You see here they've got 4,500 in fuel. That's great. Um, you could load them up more. It's loaded here just as, like it would load a tender, but you could load this all the way to the brim and run it like a tanker. So anyway, the idea being with these auxiliary ships, they're floating replenishment devices. You know, they're just things that go along with you. Um, I will mention, and it's beyond the scope here, that you can merge or you can have these things meet your task forces. And I'll just show you this really quickly because it's actually a fairly important concept, which is let's just form uh, this. Let's do support. Done. Let's click on one of the AOs, okay. So now we've got a support group. Now down here, what you'll see is meet task force or follow task force. So with these auxiliary ships, these are the important ones. Um, you know, you see again what we talked about last time, waypoints and patrol zones, but follow task force, you're gonna click on that and you're gonna be like, whoa, 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 where did everything go? Let's say what you have to do is find a task force. Now, I was way out here. Let's go out by Pearl Harbor. Uh, you know, we're not going to be playing this game. So let's just click on this. And see, it will, it will chart a path even to the point of if that other task force is moving, 
it will chart a path to where it's going to be. So if this task force is moving up here, you would see this like, you know, here, and it will follow. You can tell it how far to trail it um, at destination, wherever that the other task force is at its destination, how far off you want this to stand. So maybe you want all your support ships five hexes behind, uh, you know, it, really it's entirely up to you. So, oh, I guess standoff three hexes is the max. Um, and trail, you can trail that force by three and it will just follow it. Same with meet. If you wanted it to go meet this task force, uh, click on it, it will chart a path to go meet it. Now, when it does, you can tell it to refuel it or you can tell it to merge with it or you can tell it to follow it. So really cool, right? Uh, you can have these support ships with fuel that have a lot of fuel. You can have them merge uh, into your task forces or you can have them just refuel and then return back to their home, home port. So that's auxiliary ships. Uh, we're not gonna go deep, deep into that. For the early game, the first six months, 12 months of the game, I would say that you know this is just not a, a, an important enough concept to take a lot more time, um, but I did wanna show those to you. Now, we will finally get to transports, but before we do, I have to show you ground forces and kind of broach the topic of ground forces very quickly. And we will go over this in much more de detail when I do the ground forces section, but I just needed to point this out. When you pull up a ground force, so, you know, we're clicked on this, this is the West Coast Command Headquarters. Okay, you see a flag, those are always Command Headquarters. That's fine, you know, we probably want that in San Francisco or LA, one of the two. Um, then you see attached to West Coast. This attached to is incredibly important. Um, and you'll see why more when we get into ground units. But let's go down here to the other force ground forces we have here. Attached to West Coast. That makes sense. This is the San Francisco, I mean, it's even named the San Francisco Base Force Engineer Unit. It's, I can tell you, it's fixed here. You can't, you couldn't move it if you wanted to. This base force will always be in San Francisco. So it gives a lot of naval support, aviation support, which you want in a good base force. You know, this is the kind of base force you have with, uh, you know, a ton of, of stuff. That's what you want at a big city or a big, big base, I should say. So, okay, uh, let's go to the next one. Huh, so now we've got the 34th Infantry Regiment Infantry Unit, okay? You see all the stuff that makes up the unit, not important for our purposes. What's important here is you see attached to Pacific Fleet. That means it can leave the West Coast. So let's go to the next one and this will point it out even more. So this is the 19th Combat Engineer Regiment. Okay, they're engineers. Uh, that's great. And you'll see here, attached to West Coast, but it's lit up. So let's click on that. What does that mean? Choose new headquarters for the 19th Combat Unit. Hmm. So you see here on the West Coast, here are all the different units on the West Coast. You see the North Pacific. It does say yet to arrive. We'll get into that when we get into ground forces. But you could pick any of these that you wanted to. Pacific Fleet. Uh, you'll see all the things underneath the Pacific Fleet. And you'll see here, current headquarters is West Coast. It costs 93 points to change, and you have 100 available. So just for fun, let's pick P Pacific Fleet and hit Done. So that's what I talked about very early on, either I think the very first episode. Uh, no, when we went over the uh, database buttons up at the top. Uh, when it comes to political points, one of the reasons they're so important, so powerful, is you can buy units out of their command and give them a different command. So we want to move this thing out into the Pacific. We cannot do this. It is held on the West Coast if it says West Coast. 
um, you have to change it over to Pacific Fleet. Now it's no longer locked. So we're just going to hit done. And you'll see when we do that, this is now Pacific Fleet. Um, and we can move this out of the West Coast. Now, what's the other thing we need to know about ground units before we talk about the real topic, which is uh, the naval part of this? So it's been moved to Pacific Fleet. So we have that at Pacific Fleet. We have the 34th Infantry at Pacific Fleet. Uh, the next one here, 47th Construction, Pacific Fleet. Then we have some West Coasts that we could buy out. We have another Pacific Fleet. So these are all good. They can all move another AA regiment, uh, you know, anti-aircraft that we could buy out if we wanted. Artillery that's Pacific Fleet. Uh, and then, well, this is a, an air headquarters. We'll get into those in the air unit. But let's go back here and look at our 19th Combat Engineer Regiment. Uh, we want to get these guys out, you know, let's look at what we've got here. We've got some support. We've got some engineers and engineer vehicles, which could be very important on some of those Pacific islands out there. We want to speed up building our airfields out there and our ports out there. So no real reason for these guys to hang around San Francisco. San Francisco already has all of the support it needs and all the engineers it needs. So let's get it out to the Pacific. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, you'll see down here at the bottom left, a troop load cost, 1033, a cargo load cost, 1428, and a total load cost of 2461. It also has a stacking number that's really only relevant to the really small islands. Um, and that's usually 6,000. So this has got, you know, this is fine. We can pretty much take this anywhere. Uh, but how are we going to get it there? So I always find it helpful when I'm loading troops to write these things down. So 1033, 1428, I am literally going to write these down because you will forget um, and if you want to do multiple units, especially, you will forget. So, okay, cool. 1033, 1428 for troop and cargo. T and C. All right, and the total is 2461 total. All right, so let's then go into our ships and look for APs. So we're going to go back. We're going to click on this. Um, you know, we could do all ships or not or we could do APs. So there are our APs. These um, are all of our transport ships. And you can see here, you know, we've got some nice, nice looking ships, a lot of endurance, over 10,000 here at San Francisco. Got a lot of those. Uh, they, you know, have some good speed. I mean, look at these down here, 22. You're starting to talk about transports that, you know, are moving, um, you know, maybe not at destroyer speeds, but at some of the bigger capital ship speeds. So that's great. And then you see over here capacity. Now, when it comes to APs, and again, this little X makes no difference for what we're talking about here. Um, when you see these APs, when we see capacity, as opposed to that meaning how much supply or fuel it can take, this is the total load capacity uh, of the transport. So now you remember we needed 2461. You may or may not remember, but at least I wrote it down. You need 2461 in total capacity for this unit. So let's click on the Santa Inez. It's one of the, well, let's see, we can make it even smaller. Let's click on the President Tyler. It's got 3300 uh, in load capacity. Let's click on that. Now you go down here to the right and you see troop capacity 1500 so looking we needed 1033 so that works and then you see cargo capacity 1800 and we needed 1428 hey that's perfect this works we can fit our troop and cargo capacity on there uh no problem so let's go back so that was the president tyler let's form a new task force Let's do that as a transport. Let's get off of all ships and just bring up our APs. Uh, there's the President Tyler. Done. 
and you know let's just make up something let's say we're going to christmas island transport christmas so now you're going to know where it's going okay transport christmas the tyler we're all ready to go right nope not quite now what do you do um you're going to dock this task force and you're going to load troops awesome okay so you're going to see all the troops that you could take out here now what we were trying to load up you can see it here 1033 true it tells you troop and cargo 1428 it's got an assault value of 44 that's cool um and you're like well damn this thing's grayed out what can i do you'll see here it's not in strategic mode what does that mean well let's go back down here to the 19th there it is the 19th combat engineer regiment to put anything on a transport or a railway so if we're going to move this by rail or by transport you have to click strategic move so that makes sense if you've played any war games in the past or whatever we're not marching anywhere which is move you have to flip it over into strategic move now it's going to tell you it's going to pack and unpack in one day um so that's cool right it's you know it, this is modeled well and then it's saying hey guys you know we're we're moving out to christmas island get all your stuff ready and say goodbye to your sweetheart because we're headed to christmas island so that's going to take one day to happen now oh by the way you can see our transport down here um so that's you know that's what a transport looks like you'll start to identify those as crazy as that sounds you're like well that doesn't really look that different than this ship you start to identify them after a while so we're docked remember uh we're we had clicked load troops but we found out we couldn't load the troop now we're going to click on load troops again now because we put it in a strategic move you see the 19th combat engineer regiment is ready to go so we're going to select the unit it's loading the unit okay right below that it says load not verified um what does that mean well it means it's not verified it's very simple right this gives you all of the stats here but if you really want to make sure those troops are going to get on this ship and everything's cool and kosher hit verify load now you see 19th combat engineer regiment 100 percent allocated one ship i this is where i will point out to you that for every unit regardless of cargo or troop capacity that you need let's say you have some massive transport ship that can do 20,000 troop capacity and 20,000 cargo capacity just for argument's sake you would still only be able to put one unit on that ship you need one transport ship for every single unit so we can build a task force with 20 transport ships in it and load 20 units on it assuming that we have the troop and cargo capacity to do so um, but not 21 regardless if we have all the excess capacity in the world so for every and that's just one of these things the game does well because it makes it a little more historically accurate as to how much you could really transport uh, when it came to troops and whatnot so you know they don't want you building mega capacity transports that don't really take along the number of transports that you really would have historically that's why uh, but for our purposes or your purposes of playing the game just remember every unit and this is considered a unit whether it be a regiment battalion brigade doesn't matter if it's a if it's got a card in the game it's a unit um, it will take a transport ship for every one of those okay so anyway you see 100 percent allocated cool uh this has been verified um you know there's nothing in red so <laughs> that's the best way to know uh that nothing has uh slipped your verification if for some reason you do have something in red let's just say that this had more than uh 
the 1800 cargo capacity that the Tyler has, let's just say it had 2000 cargo capacity. Um, the unit did, well, I say capacity, I use the wrong wording. Let's say the unit needed to bring along 2000 in cargo. The Tyler only has 1800 in capacity. This would pop red and say, you know, 87% uh, is allocated. And you'd be like, oh, crap, what do I do now? Well, now you could either back out of this and go get a cargo ship and add it to this task force just to take cargo. Or you could take, you could put in another transport ship that has cargo capacity if you wish. Or you could just go down here and add a ship to the task force and it lets the computer pick it for you. So we don't have to worry about that this time because we have enough. I'm gonna show you an example of that in a minute. So let's accept load and awesome. The game will load just a couple of pieces on here. Um, so you see one, so 1% 1 has loaded of the 19th combat so that you see it here of course we would set our destination to christmas island we would have it at unload cargo this sucker would load up those troops now it's going to take one day for them to pack except for these this one guy here or something it's going to take them a day to pack then they're going to start loading as soon as they're done loading the tyler is going to automatically undock go to christmas island drop these guys off and come back to its home port. So a lot of it's automated, but this is how you load troops. So let's do this one more time. Um, and this time, let's do it with this big 34th Infantry Regiment. 34th Infantry needs 2277 in troops. It needs 5819 in cargo and it needs a total of 8096. Okay, um, let's go build a task force. So let's go over here. We've still got our AP selected. I do like that about this game. If you do a sort like this, it keeps up what you had uh, instead of having to do it all over again. Uh, just don't forget that that's where you are. <laughs> so uh, we are looking for uh, at least 8,100 in capacity. And let's say we're gonna take this a long ways. So you still see the tailor out here. Um, all ships, let's go back to the AP. Oh, whoops, sorry. I was kind of screwing around there and then, uh, this is, okay. Let's do it this way, 4550. Let's do the Jackson and the Monroe. So let's form a new task force. This new task force will be a transport task force. Uh, let's, um, well, I said that, but when you get to, sh to ship selection, it doesn't keep it, of course. Um, I said Jackson and Monroe, right? So we've got 1350 in each for troop and 3200 for cargo. Now, just like every other task force, we're going to be looking for like endurances, like speeds. Um, you know, you don't want this 14 in with the 17 slowing them down because the task force only moves at as, as its slowest component. So we need 2277 in troops. Uh huh. And we need 5819 in cargo. So this gives us 6400 in cargo and 2,700 in troops. So these do work. So let's do the Jackson and the Monroe. That should give us plenty of capacity. Done. Great. Awesome. Uh, you know, let's, let's say transport Pago. Take this sucker to Pago Pago. Uh, let's dock so that we get a more efficient load and let's go to load troops. Uh, now, you'll see our 19th Combat Engineer Regiment down here. It's loading on Task Force 42, so you don't, like, try to reload it. You also see all these air groups. We could be taking them out um, because they're part of the 5th U.S. Bomber, which is not restricted to the U.S. 
The fourth is restricted to the U to the mainland, um, but the fifth is not, and the Hawaiian, of course, is not. So we'll be ferrying these things out to the Pacific. Um, so we go down to the 34th Infantry Regiment. We're like, great, we're ready to go. Uh, not in strategic mode. So let's ship that over to strategic mode. You can do it very quickly here. If you click on that gray strategic mode, it automatically puts it in there. That's just like a nice advantage of this. So we'll select unit. Oh, <laughs> now that's funny. I actually did reuse a ship. We had, <laughs> we had used that Monroe the last time. Oh boy. All right, so, well, this will give us good practice. We're gonna come out of here and take the Monroe out and the Jackson out, because I honestly can't remember which one I use now. Let's, uh, let's go to done. Let's see what we actually had in this. Now we've got the Tyler. So the Tyler is the one taking that. Okay. So we must have picked the Tyler. Let's try this one more time. Form task force. Transport. I thought we picked the Jackson and the Monroe. What in the world? Oh, shoot. All ships. All ships. Nope. AP. Jackson. Monroe. We're not taking the Tyler. Weird. There we go. That's great. Uh, you know, you'll find when you're building task forces that you'll be flipping in and out, uh, disbanding them, saying, oh, that doesn't quite work um, quite often. So let's try this again. 34th Infantry, loading unit. Uh, let's verify load. Now it's telling us we're getting very close here. Used 5819. Um, let's go to verify load. Nope, we're good. 100% allocated. That orange just means you're close. Uh, it wants to let you know that. Um, let's go ahead and click add ship to task force and see it's just adding the Santa Inez. This means it will just spread it across three ships if that's what you want to do. When we uh, So let's go ahead so we verified it. Let's go ahead and accept the load. That's fine. Now we can go transfer ships to and fro, get the Inez out of here. Nope, you can't do it. You can't take something out of a task force once something's already been started to load onto it. So what you would have to do here is unload cargo and ships again and start over. So be very careful when you throw these things in here. Now this one might be okay. It's a little faster than our our main two ships so okay cool we'll leave it in here that's fine and spread it across three ships now then let's go find something that doesn't quite work so i know that we have something else out here that's pacific 47th construction engineer regiment this needs only a 288 troop and you'll find that with these big engineering units they don't have as big a troop load cost but they have a bigger cargo load cost so let's um do this 288 2480 we'll go ahead and put this in strategic move so that it's ready to go and we're going to find something that can't quite handle the cargo so 2488 let's form a new task force let's go to transport let's get rid of all ships Let's go to APs, uh, cargo. Okay, so the bit, the Bliss cannot handle its complete cargo, but let's try to do it anyway. Um, always name it first. Let's do transport, and let's just say we're going to Pearl Harbor. Transport Pearl. Okay. Let's dock it, and let's load troops. Now you see that. Where is it? There it is up at the top. 47th Construction Regiment, Pacific Fleet. We're all ready to go. Let's select the unit. Nope. It's saying it um, can't do this because your cargo load available is 2200. Used is 2480. Uh, so let's go to verify load. Now, one thing I will tell you while we're at the screen and before I get forget, if you're having cargo load problems, so you... Early in the game as the allied player, you do not have enough transports. 
So you're having a really difficult time transporting everything you need to transport out of the Pacific. If you're starting to have problems with that, um, use cargo ships if you can to get the equipment on there and get that loaded because cargo ships can take the equipment just fine and use this turn on load troops only so that the transports are only taking the troops. But in this case, I just wanted to point that out before I forgot but because it's, a, it's an important concept and I just hadn't mentioned it. Um, so let's go to verify load here and we're like, well, crud, we can only get 90% on here. Now it does show you that it's taking all of your troops because it says not yet allocated. Troops, zero. So all of your troops have been allocated, but it's telling you it cannot allocate 280 of the equipment. So we're going to hit get more ships. It's going to give us uh, this AK. See, it gave us a cargo ship that will then take the equipment. So you can always go add a ship. So let's say now that we're all good, we're all in the white, there's no red here, we can accept the load. You can see the 47th construction is starting to load here. So hopefully that makes sense to you. I think once you do it a few times, you'll be like, oh my gosh, you know, you'll be flying through these menus because you'll very easily be able to build a troop transport, uh, add ships, take ships away if needed, but be careful, you know, don't put things in there that get uh, that tiny little fraction loaded on them because then you can't get them all you can't get that ship out of your task force unless you unload it first which stinks uh, we also talked about ship repair um, and the four different kinds of ship repair whether that be pier side readiness you know whether it be readiness at the pier side or stood down at the pier side or stood down with repair ships helping, or stood down all the way back to the shipyard. We talked about that. We talked about auxiliary ships that are your floating uh, supply and fuel ships that later in the game become much more important than they are earlier in the game. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I tried to get through it as fast as I could. It looks like I've gone about that same hour and 15 mark, uh, but these are the important concepts of the game. Uh, I will tell you, I'm going to be making play this game in six, learn how to play this game in 60 minutes at the end of this as my 12th ep episode. Uh, we'll see if I can do it <laughs> because as you now know, there are a lot of concepts to this game, but they become intuitive. They become second nature once you've done them enough. And it's a great, great game once you understand it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I certainly enjoyed making it. Thank you for visiting Strategy Gaming Dojo, and please click subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again. See you next time.